Will Angelina Jolie pull a Johnny Depp? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Maleficent. I know you're there. Don't be afraid. I am not afraid. Then come out. Then you'll be afraid. All the other fairies fly. And why don't you? I had wings once. They were strong. But they were stolen from me. There is evil in this world. Hatred and revenge. <laughs> Never go full retard! Wise words about the importance of restraint from Ben Stiller's Tropic Thunder. But that was about winning an Oscar. Does a similar sentiment apply to blockbusters with Never Go Full Camp? Both Johnny Depp and Heath Ledger masterfully walked that fine line with Pirates of the Caribbean and The Dark Knight, elevating the genre to new levels of respect from critics and fans alike. They also elevated the blockbuster to new levels of box office, which earned Hollywood's respect. Know what else they elevated? Paychecks. So now every studio, filmmaker, and actor is eager to see if they can create another Jack Sparrow or the Joker. But it's not as easy as it looks. This year, Jamie Foxx was first out of the gate as Electro, yet the Oscar winner didn't make quite the impression he'd hoped. Then in X-Men Days of Future Past, there was a slew of highly regarded actors trying to counteract their campish costumes with ultra-serious performances, with solid box office results. And now we have Angelina Jolie for Disney once again, trying to create a memorable live-action cartoon. Literally, as Jolie is portraying arguably Disney Animation's most beloved villain, Maleficent, from 1959's Sleeping Beauty. And from the very first reveal, Jolie has indeed captured audiences' attention, not just with a bold look, but a bold performance. She's going for it! In fact, Jolie has said that this is the first time in her career she's felt it wasn't her job to portray, but to entertain. Yet with each additional trailer for the film, and there have been many, Jolie seems more and more to waver between Mean Girls and Mommy Dearest, with very little of the original Sleeping Beauty in sight. Even Maleficent's headdress has become more old Hollywood than Wicked Witch, although, to be fair, aging Hollywood stars have been known to be Wicked Witches. Is that what Jolie is? She's been absent from the big screen since 2010's The Tourist, not only to pursue directing, but to undergo a preventive double mastectomy, a procedure which has been an inspiration to a lot of people, but also had the unexpected side effect of making her seem older to some audiences. Now, sure, Maleficent is written by Linda Wolverton, who penned Disney's live-action Alice in Wonderland, and is the directorial debut of Robert Stromberg, the production designer on Alice, Oz the Great and Powerful, and Avatar. But this movie has always been about Angelina Jolie as Maleficent. Such on-the-nose casting that producer Joe Roth said if she'd turned the role down, he would have scrapped the project entirely. So while Jack Sparrow was a pleasant surprise, this live-action Maleficent is expected to deliver. Which is odd, as Jolie has never really been able to deliver at the box office. But maybe she just needed the right role and Roth is right that this is it? Or does she go full camp? I had a wonderful time watching this movie. It is both enchanting and thrilling. And yes, Angelina Jolie does turn in a performance on par with Johnny Depp as Jack Sparrow and Heath Ledger as the Joker. It's that instantly iconic. And just as we see multiple Jack Sparrows and uh, the Jokers, the Heath Ledger version at Halloween, expect to see a lot of Maleficence. I think this character is going to really connect with women of all ages. All women are going to want to be Maleficent, at least for one night, Halloween. And not only do I think Disney has a wonderful character here going forward, but I'm very excited for what this could do for Angelina Jolie's career, because she is instantly accessible in the role. Now, of course, she's always been very famous and known for her beauty and her talent and her uh, ability as an action uh, heroine, but here, uh, there's always been some distance, and I think here, the gap is closed. So I'm very excited for uh, what this could mean for her going forward and the new kind of roles she could perhaps be offered. I don't know how much she's going to pursue a career in front of the camera. She's expressed a lot of interest in going behind it, which is great, but I think we see a new side to her that I would love to explore more and to see her have the opportunity to explore more. She is incredibly likable in this role. Uh, I thought she was great. So one great thing about the film is Jolie's performance. The other thing is, is that while watching it, I had to, th I had to say to myself, I'm scared for the future of animation. Because if Disney can produce a live-action fairy tale that's this good, 
what does that leave animation? Uh, it takes away, at least for Disney animation, their best genre, the fairy tale, uh, and just pulls it out from underneath them with one movie. Because this film, for instance, just the sequence where she puts the curse on the baby, uh, the baby princess Aurora, is infinitely more powerful and magical than the original animated sequence. It was just spectacular. I was blown away. Uh, so by the fantasy elements and also with Jolie's performance. And there's, there, this film is great. It's great across the board. But I have to say, when I left the theater, I felt guilty. And I actually got into a heated discussion with the people I went with. Because I felt that the film was unfair towards men. It didn't offer a well-balanced portrayal of an entire gender. Uh, to the point where, for little boys, I don't think they should they should be taken to see this movie. I know that's a strong statement to make, but there's no strong male role models for them to, you know, latch on to when watching the movie. And the way that men are portrayed and the way that men and women interact, I worry about the message that would be taken away by a young, impressionable mind. Um, you know, we talk about discrimination in the classroom, etc. Uh, this is that on an epic fantasy scale. Uh, also, it's for little girls. I'm not quite sure if this is appropriate for them as well. There are some very sophisticated ideas at work here, but not just in that they're complex, but that they're very adult. So if a little girl were to see this film, I think that at the very least, you would need to have a serious discussion with her after the movie to make sure she takes away the right messages, and also that she understands that these are your only choices when it comes to men. Now, Disney has been accused for decades of perpetrating the very harmful myth of women must be saved by men. And I think those accusations, to some degree, are well-founded. Uh, and it's great to see Disney moving in, in a different direction, in the opposite direction. But perhaps they're going too far. I think it's a bad idea that the only way women can be shown as strong is, uh, is to weaken the men, I th or to vilify the men. I think that's a very bad message uh, for all ages. Uh, but so I, And I do think with the film that the way the story of what happens to Maleficent here is important, and it's necessary. It's a real danger. Uh, and I think that's why one of the reasons I think women will connect to this film, because I think it speaks to a, a certain way that men and women do interact. But it's not the only way they interact, and I think that's not... The film does a disservice to male and female relations by not showing the whole picture. Uh, and I think it could have been easily fixed, by the way. Prince Philip here, you know, pretty much blink and you miss him. Uh, I think that if they had bulked up his role, and st while still keeping everything that they have here, because it's so well done, and just added a another strong character uh, in, in Prince Philip, I think that the movie would have fixed all of its problems and wouldn't be suffering the way it is in the reviews, which is a shame, because as uh, I said, Angelina Jolie's performance is so great, but because of this one flaw of the way me men are portrayed in the film, I think it's hurting it uh, in terms of reviews and could ultimately hurt it at the box office. Uh, and so, as I said, which is a shame. This is a great movie. I see no reason to exclude an entire gender from the fun. Uh, and also, Prince Philip is one of the best classic Disney princes. He's the most well-developed. He contributed the most to the story. He had a name. Uh, and I think that, as I said, having strong women shouldn't mean weakening men. And I think that goes for characters as well. We want more strong female characters, but we, do we have to take away uh, the strong male characters that already exist? And Prince Philip was one of those. Uh, it's the same thing we say about women all the time. Why do you have to lose the strong female characters uh, for, the, for the sake of the male characters? So I think the, the opposite should hold true as well. Uh, so I just want to make sure this is a very complicated discussion. I want to make sure I got all my notes right. So basically, I'm very conflicted about the film. Uh, as you can see, I think it's a truly wonderful film, a great movie, and I really suggest that you go and see it uh, in theaters in 3D. But just be aware of what's going on. And again, if you have any young, impressionable minds going with you, make sure that you guide them so that they get out on the other side uh, in, in a positive way instead of a negative way. But overall, I'm very excited for Disney as a studio, as a creative force. Uh, I think this builds a lot and improves on Frozen. Uh, I'll get more into that in my spoiler review, but I think it's exciting because I think it fixes a lot of the problems that existed in Frozen. For instance, look how wonderful it is when your um, misunderstood female protagonist is well developed. And I think if Elsa had gotten the Maleficent treatment, that could have really been an even more special movie than uh, Frozen turned out to be. Of course, it's hard to, you know, to say anything negative about Frozen at this point, considering how successful it was. But uh, if Elsa had gotten, as I said, the Maleficent treatment, it could have been, uh, you know, it could have 
been uh, a great film in every category, which, you know, and Maleficent isn't either. So I'm hoping on the next round, uh, this next fairy tale that Disney makes, animated or live action, that they fix the new problems that arose here. But I think Disney, as I said, is moving in the right direction and they're moving there very quickly and it's very exciting. And I guess these are, this is a complex idea and I think it's new to Hollywood to show women in this way and try and be very, uh, you know, strong in terms of how women are portrayed and that they don't need to be rescued so much. Uh, and so I guess Disney and Hollywood in general are still feeling around and trying to get it just right. But uh, this is a pretty big mistake. And I, I, as I said, it's a real shame because the film is so good. Uh, and, then this, and this mistake didn't have to be made. So that's my review of Maleficent. If you've seen the movie, I hope you'll leave your own thoughts down below. And I hope you'll check out my spoiler review right now.